Government looking towards Swiftonomics to boost tourism income. Swiftonomics. And one week, foreign tourist levies reach 9.1 billion rupees. Stay tuned for details. Selamat siang. Welcome to the latest news from Bali in Indonesia. This is February 22nd, 2024. I think I've got all that right. And my name is Bruce. And I'm back. Well, I've been off. I got a, a really bad case of the flu and I am just getting over it. Still got a bit of a cough and the weather has been so funky here. What about the weather? Well, right now it is 32 degrees Celsius. 74% humidity, wind speed 6.4 kilometers per hour, and rained again last night. So it's been raining on and off and on and off. Some days sunny, some days not. And so, well, it's hard for me to get rid of these things when I get these flu things in my lungs. Wow, difficult to get rid of. But I'm looking better these days. Well, at least feeling better. Don't know about looking better. Okay, and what has been going on since then a lot of stuff the election right happened and well it seems that uh, Pak Prabowo has won and that's not going to be official for another month or so be official in March if the uh, early results hold up after the uh, election commission validates everything and so we'll be having a new president eventually and a lot of other stuff, a lot of accidents been going on, partly because of the weather, the fallen trees, landslides, but also a number of cases, particularly of young people who have been in accidents, a couple of fatal, using their hand phones apparently while they were driving. Not, not, not good. So if you're out there driving, be careful. A lot of accidents. Oh, and we had my granddaughter's 11th birthday the other day and uh, I did a video on it but I have not gotten around to fixing it yet. I have a new computer here also that happened over the last couple of weeks. My old computer starting to die out and so I got a new one and I tried something different this time. I bought an Indonesian brand computer called Advan and it is an AIO computer all in one right just got like it's the iMac kind of thing, uh, 24 inches, 6.2 million rupees. How is it going to work? I don't know. I did take it apart and I put an upgrade in myself, some RAM, some storage space, speeded it up a bit, and so far, so good. And basically, it has the same specs as the Lenovo AIO, but at half the price. And so we're going to see how this works out. I'm, I'm testing this. I really would like to buy some Indonesian brands if possible, especially if they're cheaper, but we're going to see how that works out. Anyway, let's get to the first story. Government looking towards Swiftonomics to boost tourism income. Okay, Taylor Swift is having a big impact all over the world. The country is considering more incentives to bring in more music, sports, and cultural events that would attract travelers to spend more and stay longer. Whose idea is this? Who else? Pak San Diego Uno. He said, we need Swiftonomics for Indonesian tourism. He was referring to how neighboring Singapore will host Taylor Swift's concert that's set to bring regional visitors to the city-state and lots of money they are expecting to get. The Indonesian government has formed a one trillion rupiah tourism fund to help it bid for such events. The country plans to exempt more nationalities from visa requirements while simplifying permits to make it easier to host these kind of events in the country. Pak Sandiaga said, I'm very optimistic that with some of our transformations in tourism, we will be able to achieve better results in the coming year. And now that the election is over and it has gone pretty well, apparently, this may pave the way for more visitors to come to the archipelago, the tourism minister said. While the country is awaiting official results from the poll after unofficial quick counts, Pak Prabowo is going to be the next president and Jokowi's son 
will be vice president. I am optimistic, Pakuno said, that after the results are announced, everyone will support it and everything will be cool and tourists will flood in here. That's what we need, millions of more tourists. And speaking of millions more tourists, how is the tourist tax or tourist levy going? One week, foreign tourist levies reached 9.1 billion rupees. Head of the Bali Province Tourism Service, Pachakora Bagus Pamayun, mentioned many times, confirmed that the amount of fees reached 9.1 billion last week. According to him, this number was reached from 60,800 foreign tourists who have paid the levy. Buck Pamayan also stated that his party continues to carry out evaluations to correct existing deficiencies, one of which is regarding the proposed online payment system. Apart from that, he said Nurai Airport has provided information that although there was an increase in fees, there was no significant buildup at the airport. This is due to the fact that most payments are being made online. Approximately 80% of international tourists have been using this method. This shows that the socialization regarding online payments has been well received by visitors, according to him. He continued that so far, this is just from the airport, foreign tourists paying from cruise ships will start on the 24th in just a couple of days. The process of collecting levies from the cruise ships is still in the regulatory stage. There's only been, I don't, what, six months or so to get ready. And it's going to re require cooperation from regional banks. He said the endpoint has not been implemented because the tourists have to register first according to technical guidelines so we can monitor it. So the cruise ship fee thing is not yet done. Nothing like wait until the last minute. And regarding whether the levy amount is in line with expectations, Pak Pamayan said that his party is still evaluating the performance. The most important thing for them, he said, is that there is no buildup of foreign tourists at the airport and the visitors feel safe and comfortable when they arrive in Bali. He also emphasized that there were no complaints from tourists regarding the payment of this levy. To ensure the smooth running of the evaluation process, he explained that his party carries out evaluations every three months involving various stakeholders such as regional banks and other agencies. Despite realizing that there were some discrepancies at the start of implementation, in general he said the system has worked well up to date. Meanwhile, regarding levies during the current low season, Papa Mayan hopes that the implementation of this system will not cause accumulation, of course, and will continue to encourage online payments to improve Bali's image in the eyes of the world. Let's always worry about that brand. There was a time when Bali was not a brand, just a place. He said, we want to encourage people to pay online so that there is gonna, gonna be no buildup of people and that everything will be hunky-dory for a tourist coming in. Meanwhile, general manager of Ankasapura 2, Gusti Nurarai Airport, said that the airport management has collaborated with the Bali provincial government in implementing this policy. They have set up a special counter area in the arrival lobby of the international terminal to facilitate the fee collection process. Now, I'm not sure how this is working. I know that there were some complaints initially. I haven't seen any recently. But if you have been through this process, please leave a comment, good, bad, or whatever. Have you paid online? And how did that work with the, what is it, I Love Bali uh, site? And I have a link down below to that. Or are you paying at the airport? And because you don't really trust the online system yet. So let us know what's going on with that. I'm really interested to see how people other than the government actually find this new system. And currently in the low season, the Number of tourists coming in through the airport is around 15 to 16,000 per day. Mm, so a little lower than back in the high season, but high season will be coming up again in just a few months. And so how is this system gonna work when we're getting tons of planes flying in here constantly? Just have to wait and see, I guess. And what about the transparency? Where is all this money going? Is it going to be used to clean up trash? Is it going to be used to fix the roads? Is it going to be used for the 
LRT. It's going to be used for the mythical North Bali Airport. Is it going to support cultural tourism? And here is some good news for dog lovers. Not dog meat lovers, but dog lovers. Bali Provincial Government officially issues ban on selling dog meat. Satpo PP can enforce rules more strictly. These regulations are contained in the Bali Pro Province Regional Regulation Number 5 of 2023 concerning the implementation of public order, public peace, and community protection. Article 28.1a states that the distribution and sale and purchase of dog meat is a criminal offense with a maximum penalty of three months in prison or a minimum fine of 50 million rupees. In the context of monitoring and controlling the distribution of dog meat, the Bali Provincial Satpol has done this long before, according to government instructions, but now they're going to be able to carry out stricter enforcement because it's been regulated through number five of 2023. The head of Bali Province Satpol PP said that his party has carried out outreach to stop the distribution of dog meat by also collaborating with foundations and dog lovers to provide guidance on business transition. He said, we encourage these traders, dog meat traders, to change their type of business in terms of capital. The guidance is supervised by the foundation. It's not just about stopping the person-to-person -person dog meat trade. It's more about providing guidance and encouraging people to change their business. After carrying out various types of outreach, including coaching in several business places, if it's still found that dog meat is being sold, standard operating procedures will be implemented. First, the guidance will be carried out, and if they're still selling dog meat, after a third warning, legal action will be taken. So that there is a deterrent effect on business actors, it's prohibited according to the regional regulations that were made. He said, until now, we haven't gotten there once or twice at the locations, but then they shift their business to chicken, goat, and pork satay. Actually, not many people know that it's prohibited. So now we have to enforce the law and let them know. People don't know that dog meat is prohibited? Well, I guess they're going to be told. Outreach activities are still being carried out around the island. So a little more protection for the doggies not a bad thing at all. Okay, what about some travel too? One of the places that Pak San Diego Uno is pushing as an alternative to Bali, mm, Labuan Bajo. Air Asia skips off taxiway in Labuan Bajo's Komodo Airport. Oh, not good. Air Asia flight QZ860 on the Jakarta Labuan Bajo route overshot the taxiway and skidded off the track towards the apron at the Komodo Airport on the 19th. The low-cost carrier spokesperson, Agung Wibowo, said that the plane had veered off after a flawless landing. He said all passengers and crew are safe. The flight carried 151 passengers landing at 1020 Central Indonesia time. All of the passengers and crew were safely evacuated from the plane. The aircraft was also evacuated efficiently and moved to a parking area. The whole process took about 50 minutes. The runway was cleared and was able to resume for normal operations. Pakaging said the airline's team was collaborating with the airport authority to conduct a thorough investigation into the incident, which delayed the next flight, QZ681, on the Labuan Bajo Jakarta route for several hours. Passengers, he added, received compensation for the delay in line with Transportation Minister's Regulation Number 892015. I hope they got some good compensation for that. That might have been scary. Indonesia Air Asia remains committed to achieving the highest safety standards in all its operations and will continue to monitor the situation to provide regular updates. Okay, some bad news for those who are skittish about air travel, especially here in Indonesia. I don't know how I would feel if my plane kind of shot off the runway. Whoa! But Fortunately, no one was injured, and so a cautionary tale about travel. Maybe stick to fairies, although they're not always the safest thing either. And if you've been buying rice, you're probably aware that rice prices have been going up, and this is in the news all over the country. And Pak Chikoi blames climate change for spike in rice prices. Well, 
a president who believes in climate change. President Jokowi stated that the upsurge in rice prices was primarily caused by climate change, which resulted in crop failures, leading to a global hike in rice prices, including in Indonesia. According to the president, despite the decrease in rice production, the consumption of rice has remained constant in Indonesia. Consequently, there is a shortage of the supply of rice, which in turn has caused a rise in market prices. The National Food Agency's official page on Monday reported that the average price of premium rice reached 16,100 rupee per kilogram. The average price of rice in Jakarta, 16,500. The highest price recorded was in Papua, 23,800, and lowest price in Aceh, 14,850. In order to help poor families, the government distributed rice assistance to 22 million families based on data from the Coordinating Ministry for Human Development and Culture. The government provides this rice to help all mothers because of the increase in prices. The rice assistance program has been going on since the beginning of 2023 and is planned to continue into June of this year. Pak Jokowi said the problem would be extended again if the state budget permits. So the harbor in Gilimanuk is going to be spruced up. As the main western entrance, Gilimanuk Harbor will have a more Balinese style. Gilimanuk Harbor as the main entrance to the western region of Bali from the Java Island still does not reflect the characteristics or cultural character of Bali as a global tourist destination, i.e. brand. Therefore, there needs to be comprehensive arrangement to reflect Balinese culture as the front face of Bali in the eyes of tourists who come through the harbor. This was expressed by Pak Kasta Wan, who is the planning coordinator for the basic design of Gilimano Harbor and its surroundings. He explained that the harbor should reflect Balinese culture, and that this refers to spans of historical periods from prehistory up through the current time, and all this needs to be dis explored and put on display at the harbor so that there is continuity from the past to the present to the future. He said we call this Tree Samaya. Presenting Tree Samaya in the arrangement of Gili Harbor will make people coming to Bali feel the aura of Bali. And how are they going to do this? There's going to be a transit hotel, a marina, a floating restaurant, a prehistoric human museum, an art gallery, as well as an upgrade of Gilimano TPEB terminal, which will function with the migrant residents and also as an MSME gallery. In accordance with Bali Regional Regulation Number no. 5 of 2005 concerning architectural requirements for buildings, all buildings built in Bali have Balinese architectural nuances. Uh, let's take a look at those new villages, do they? Because Balinese architecture is our clothes, it becomes our identity. What happens if we're without clothes? We wear other people's clothes, then people don't recognize us. So it's the same as with other things, he said. And he's a lecturer at the engineering faculty at Udayana University in Dempasar. So the development of the port is going to be done adopting the green port concept. A green port is where green means sustainable both environmentally, culturally, and economically. Gilimano Port is expected to be a driving force for the development of the surrounding area. Of course, with various facilities and connectivity both by land, sea, and air, Gilimano will become one hub. Right now, they're at the initial stage, but there are many more stages g coming in terms of budget. Well, they're prioritizing work based on the budget. However, this remains in line right now with local government programs. The Jambrana regent admitted that he was very happy with the re redesigned concept for the harbor presented by the planning team. He said the concept is very good. It fulfills the Balinese elements. So the first impression of people entering Bali will be very good because Gilimanuk Harbor is the face of Bali. And that is it for today. Kind of a gray day. Um, C is, well, steel blue and choppy, choppy, choppy. Okay, well, if you are here on the island, I hope you're having a good time. And if you are planning on coming soon, well, I hope you get some good weather while you're here. 
Leave a comment about what the process is like when you're coming in now during the low season. Are you being able to go right through? I saw one comment of a guy who said, it took me 15 minutes from the time I got off the plane to getting to baggage, and then my baggage came and I was out the door. It was the quickest ever for me. Are you having the same kind of experience? I hope so. Thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today. Stay safe. And I will see you next time a little quicker than last time, I hope.